Okay, so I'm just going to briefly introduce Ethan and then hand, hand over straight to him. He's the co-founder of Truth and Transparency Foundation, which was founded last year. Um, and the talk is exactly what it says on the screen. If that's not what you're expecting, just stay anyway, because it's about to be awesome. Over to you, Ethan. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm sorry for those that are disappointed that not, weren't expecting this talk. We had to switch. We, sw we switched a couple weeks ago. I, it didn't make it into the hacker tracker. I'm not sure why, but that's okay. I promise this is going to be awesome. So, um, cool. So let's get let's get to it. Um, just so I I'm totally cool with questions in the middle of my talk. If you just want to shout them out or raise your hand or whatever, I'm totally cool with it. So, um, all right. Really quick, who am I? I was born and raised a Mormon. Um, I eighth generation Mormon on both sides. Both sides of my family crossed the plains from Nauvoo, Illinois to Salt Lake City, Utah. That's where I was born and raised. I served a Mormon mission in Guatemala. I left the Mormon church two years ago. Um, are there any ex-Mormons here in the room, fellow ex-Mormons? All right. All right. Awesome. Ex-Mormons unite. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm a defer professional. I, I do a lot of OSINT stuff in my free time. I don't get, a lot, get to do it a lot in, uh, um, in my day job, and that kind of sucks. As she said, I'm the co-founder of the Truth and Transparency Foundation. That's the overarching organization of Mormon leaks and faith leaks. I don't know how many of you guys have heard of those, but I doubt a lot of you have. <laughs> and, uh, but they are what they sound like. Mormon leaks is the WikiLeaks basically for Mormonism. We're not associated with many WikiLeaks, but that is a very easy way to describe it. And FaithLeaks is for all other religions. Um, and I'm a craft beer enthusiast, so um, I love beer. Um, Truth and Transparency Foundation, we founded it in November 2017. Uh, umbrella organization for Mormon Leaks, Faith Leaks. Truth, check us out at truthandtransparency.org. Um, we kind of have three pillars that we believe in. Um, I'm not going to go into them because it's a, it's a lightning talk. You could go to our website and read about them. Um, but we're basically just trying to bring more transparency to religions. Right? Uh, Mormon leaks, uh, that's our mission statement. One thing that I wanted to highlight is that we believe that increased transparency within the Mormon church results in fewer untruths, uh, less corruptions, and less abuse within Mormonism. Um, all right, so the title of this talk is How, Who is Data uh, Connected $32 Billion to the Mormon Church? Um, so let's take a look at Mormon Who Is um, data. Let's take a look at Mormon.org first. Um, they're um, perhaps their most well known. Um, you'll see that the registrant organization is called is Intellectual Reserve Incorporated and that they're based out of Utah. This is the um, department of the church. Um, and I do believe that they are actually a separate, separately registered entity, legal entity. Um, and they handle all the intellectual property of the Mormon church. And um, so if we look at LDS.org, we see the same thing, Intellectual Reserve Incorporated. Uh, we look at MormonNewsroom.org, which is where they publish all their press releases and, and whatnot. Um, same thing. Um, they have over 2,000 registered domains to that organization, right? Um, so um, somebody came to us and said, um, that it came to us with a list of all the registered domains to the Intellectual Reserve Incorporated, to the Mormon Church, right? Um, and as any good analyst knows, when you get a lot of data, you look at that data up and down in every which way and see if you could find any correlations. And this, this source came to us and they had already found a correlation and they noticed a shit ton of domains were registered on July 21st, 2016. Right? Um, if you look at them, you'll see like Ashmore Wealth Management, Clifton Park Capital, Capital, Cortland Advisors, Elk Fork Partners. Those all sound, what, what do those all sound like? Financial companies, right? Um, 77 domains were registered on July 21st, 2016. <clears throat> there were 13 companies that we were able to find with domains. Um, with, that were associated with those domains that had uh, every single one of those, dom well, not every, a good chunk of those domains was a variation of one of these names. And the reason that we were able to find these is because every single one of these companies filed a 13F. Who here knows what a 13F is? Okay. I was expecting a little more because we're in a room of OSINT, but that's okay. 13F, you have to a company has to file a 13F as mandated by the SEC 
um, if they hold over $100 million of assets in the US stock market, right? So all 13 of these companies hold over $100 million in the US stock market. And the 13F also tells you exactly how much, uh, how many shares and in what companies they own, right? This is Ashmore Wealth Management. This was the one that uh, they filed, uh, they have to file it every quarter, I believe. Um, this is their most recent one. Um, this, is just a, this is just the very top of it. This is not um, the entire thing. They, Ashmore Wealth Management has quite a few. Um, and you'll look, this is, for, this is a screenshot directly from the 13F. You'll see that, one, uh, that number at the bottom, that is in the thousands. So Ashmore Wealth Management has $1.9 billion in the US stock market, right? So if we go and we look at these, um, and we, so we went and, well, the, the source had already gone and found the 13Fs for all these companies, and he, uh, and they, damn it, slip up there, it's okay. Anyway, these are, these are what every single one of those companies were worth in their most recent uh, 13F. Adding up there, all, almost all of them in the billions, right? <clears throat> 13 different companies, almost every single one of them worth over a billion dollars, some of them worth over four billion dollars, and that's just their assets in the, in the U.S. stock market, right? We don't know if there's any more in, in other countries or if they have real estate or, or what, right? We just know what is filed in their 13F. <clears throat> Comes to a total of $32.7 billion, right? Um, so what? So what? I can go and register a domain. I could say I could register it to Intellectual Reserve Incorporated, put their address in there, and, and then invest $100 million in the US stock market, and now I can't invest that much money. But, you know, anybody, like, who has data is not incredibly accurate to pin, uh, to be able to con directly connect this money to the Mormon church. So we had to dig a little deeper. If we look back at the who is information for mormon.org, we'll notice their name servers, ns1.intellectualreserveinc.org, okay? If we look at ashmorewealth.com, they have the same name servers, okay? That also doesn't mean a whole lot because I can also point any, I could go register a domain and point it to those name servers if I wanted to. But if I can get those name servers, if I query those name servers for DNS records and I get, and I get a response back, it's pretty clear that, that, that those name servers are indeed controlling the, the zones for those domains. Well, guess what they do? <clears throat> and all those IP addresses in the spoof, um, in, the, in that TXT spoof record, are uh, IP addresses owned by the LDS Church. Those are the same uh, by the Mormon Church, the LDS Church or Mormon Church, you could use them interchangeably. Uh, the MX records, same MX records that the Mormon Church uses, and you'll see that uh, several other name servers are also listed, um, and they're all intellectualreserveinc.org name servers. Um, so, that, so, that, so that right there is telling me that at least the church owns these domains, right? The, there, there still remains the possibility that the church um, is doing these companies a favor by buying their domains, I don't know, right? <laughs> um, and so we had to dig a little bit deeper in order for us to publish this. Um, Mormon Leaks, we published this, um, it was May 30th of this year. Um, and we, in order for us to make this claim that this, the, this $32 billion in, in the U.S. stock market was actually connected to the Mormon church, we had to dig a little deeper. And what we did from here is no longer open source intelligence. Um, just wanted to add that disclaimer here. Um, but on the 13F, every single, <clears throat> every single uh, business has to list a business manager or some person from the company that signed the 13F, right? Um, I redacted the name just out of courtesy, but you could go on the, thir on, on the 13F and, and look at it, and it lists their name, their title, their phone number, right? Well, this is where it doesn't become OSINT anymore. We have a directory, an employee directory of the Mormon Church from 2015, and every single one of those names listed on the 13F was also a name in the employee directory of the Mormon Church. They were, almost all of them were listed 
as uh, like it working in finance or legal, uh, which we thought was interesting. Also, something very interesting is that only one of them was a woman. All the rest of them were men. Um, and uh, we actually, uh, Ryan McKnight, my associate, he's the, he's the original founder of Mormon Leaks. Um, he lives here in Vegas, and he drove um, to across the border to Arizona, a one-party consent state, and uh, and recorded. Uh, he called all of these business managers with the phone numbers that was listed in the employee directory of the Mormon Church, right? Um, and I'm just going to read to you what we published that day. I'm sorry if it's, that's not super legible. Let me, let me read it. It says, on May 29th, 2018, at approximately 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, Ryan McKnight of Mormon Leaks attempted to contact each person listed as the business, business manager on the forum's 13F. Of the 13 names that were called, only three answered the phone. Aaron Davis of Riverhead Capital Management, Troy Nielsen of Newberg Advisors, and Christy Woodward of Glen Harbor Capital Management. According to the 2015 employee directory, all three work in the church's financial records department and are the only employees with their respective names. There were no other employees um, with their same names in the church that worked for the church. Both Mr. Davis and Mr. Nielsen denied their supposed connection to, the re to their respective organizations. However, Ms. Woodward confirmed her manager position listed in GHCM's 13F. When asked if the company was owned by the Mormon church, she responded by saying, I can't answer that. Um, the, church the church's public affairs department has yet to return Mormon Leaks' request for comment. However, they did direct KUTV2 News um, to, the May to a May 22nd press release mentioned above and declined to, to comment further. On May 22nd, the church released a press release on mormonnewsroom.org, uh, that domain that I mentioned earlier, um, that kind of, they, they kind of uh, advertised it as like, um, this is what we do with our finances, but really it was just saying like, yeah, we get a lot of money and we do a lot of things with it. And <laughs> that was all that was, that was really there. So that was kind of the nail in the coffin um, was um, her, her saying that yes, she is the manager of that company and that she was not able to answer uh, whether or not the church owned that, that entity. And we went ahead and we published and said that, we, that there were $32 billion connected to the Mormon church. And it all started with who has data it was very much open source intelligence up until we actually made those phone calls. Um, that's actually all I had. It was a lightning talk, super, super quick. Uh, I will field any questions that you guys ha that you guys may have. Yeah. Could those uh, asset management just be managing accounts for the working folks? Yeah, that's de that's definitely possible. We've never claimed that the church <laughs> owns that money. Um, we've only ever said that it's that the church is connected to this money, and that and that could be the connection, right? A lot of people will go out and claim. I know that's kind of a weird nuance, but I, I we personally don't feel comfortable claiming anything else as like definitively saying yes, the Mormon Church has total control over this money. However, in my personal opinion, it's unlikely that they that they don't. How, but yes, what you just said is absolutely entirely possible. Any other questions? Yeah. As someone who doesn't know anything about religion, what are the implications for a church owning that much money? Yeah, so um, one, of the, one of the biggest criticisms is that, I want to clear this up, one of the biggest criticisms that the church gets is that they're not paying taxes on that money. That's bullshit. The church is, absolutely is paying taxes on that money. Um, the church, is, the church doesn't, ha doesn't have to pay taxes on like, their income from tithing. But when you're investing money in the stock market, any organization is going to be paying taxes. The implications really depend on the organization. Me personally, my personal opinion, I don't care how much money they have. Um, however, the Mormon Church has admitted that they donate forty million dollars to humanitarian aid a year, which is a lot of money. But compared to thirty-two billion dollars that they're connected to, that's chump change, right? So, yeah. Um, we have looked at some uh, at, at some other tools and trying to find other other domains and other uh, companies that may hold money. Um, we haven't been able to find anything quite yet. Um, if, you, if you guys want to help, we we do, we'd be we'd definitely take it. And as far as the significant uh, any significance to that July 2016 date, uh, no. I suspect that somebody like in the finance department submitted 
uh, an order to the intellectual property department saying, can you just buy all these domains, right? Um, and so they just went in and, and did it all at one time. That's what I suspect happened. But I honestly have no idea. That's pure speculation. Any other questions? Yeah. I'm sorry, what? So I, I, I'm not a financial professional. Um, and well, there have been some financial professionals that have offered their opinion. Uh, some, some of them have said what it looks like, judging by the number of stocks and in, 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 in the number of companies they have, it looks like they're spreading um, their money out evenly. Like, a, like Apple is this, mu is this much percentage of the US stock market, so the church put this much percentage of their money into Apple, like that exact same percentage, and then Microsoft, and stuff like that. And so they're, they're spreading it across. It appears that they may be spreading it across the entire stock market, um, depending on how big or small a company is and buying that many shares. As far as what percentage that $32 billion is, I don't know. A historian named Mike Quinn has given his opinion, and he's done significant research on the value of the church, and he thinks it's a small fraction of what they have. Any other questions? Okay, there's no further questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>